Hi everybody. Today I'm working on my 2004 Mini Cooper S. This is part 5 of the blown engine video series. If you haven't already done so, please watch parts 1, 2, 3, and 4. We've got some good news. The engine finally is ready to go. Uh, it came back from the machine shop just a few minutes ago. Uh, he told me it would be done yesterday afternoon, but it, he didn't finish it until about 1 in the morning last night. So uh, it's later than I expected, but not that bad. I really have to commend him for, for doing a really good job at trying to meet my tight schedule. And so now we have a bored and honed uh, block here and we'll, we can start putting it together. Because this is a used block, Jan sent up uh, half millimeter oversized pistons and recommended I get the block bored just so we don't have any clearance or spec, spec issues running this thing on the track. So we've got a nice real, real nice crosshatch pattern going looks really great. These are the new pistons. They look real nice. Um, half mil oversized. These are forged aluminum. They're, they're larger compared to the stock piston as you can see. That's going to help to prevent uh, wall slap because they got larger uh, skirts on the sides here. And they've got a dome on top to help to mix the air and the fuel for, for a cleaner burn. The race pistons are going to connect up with these uh, race connecting rods. It's a much stiffer design. It's going to be able to handle some real high RPMs. The weakest link in just about any engine is these connecting rod bolts at the bottom here. And these are special hardened bolts. Even just by looking at them you can tell they're, they're designed for performance. And last, we're putting in a set of uh, race connecting rod bearings. For the top end I'm using an RMW big valve head, same as before. The RMW head has extra strong springs and beehive keepers for a higher red line. It also comes with ink canal intake valves. The exhaust valves are about 2 millimeters larger than the previous version of the RMW head. This head makes a lot of power. So that's all the parts. Let's get started with the assembly. I don't want to be building this engine on the floor, so I picked up a nice uh, 750 pound heavy duty engine stand from Harbor Freight. This only cost about $45. All right, we got it all mounted up here. Now we'll flip it over. The first work is going to be on the bottom side. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention I painted the block red just for the heck of it because red is race car. Haha. <laughs> So first we'll re-disconnect the uh, ladder, the girdle from the bottom half here. Set this aside for now. This is going to be a sealed surface so I need to clean this up a little bit. I just need to get off all of the old uh, sealant. And I'm just using a brass wire wheel here because I know that's not going to take any metal off. It's just going to take off any of the surface dirt. And we'll do the same thing for the bottom half. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, we'll turn it back over again. All right, all of this gasket surfaces for the block look good. Now I'll start putting together the pistons. Okay, for each piston we've got, of course, the three rings. There's the oil, oil ring goes on the bottom. Then there's a scraper in the middle and a compression ring on top. So there's two rings here. One of these rings is a little bit thicker than the other. Typically the shiny, thinner one is going to go on top. And there's usually a number or a dot on it. And you want that to be facing up, always up. Before installing the rings onto the piston, we need to make sure that the end gap is correct. For this motor, the end gap should be 15 thousandths of an inch. This block, it's got a brand new uh, bore and hone, so I know it's completely equal measurements all the way up and down. If this is an old block and you were not machining it, you would want to measure at the bottom, middle, and the top of the bore. So basically just put the ring in, push it down just a little bit, rotate it until it's uh, perfectly flat. The easiest way to do that is to take one of the pistons and just kind of push it in about an inch down. Then you take a feeler gauge and put it on in. If the ring gap is insufficient, it will expand under temperature and it'll actually bind into the cylinder, causing all kinds of bad stuff. So I'm measuring here and it looks like this one's at about 13 thousandths of an inch, maybe even 12 thousandths. So I'm going to need to open up this gap just a little bit. So we've got a manual piston ring filer here. This will allow us to file down the ring and get the gap that we need. I've got an old ring here and I'm going to practice on an old ring. So rather than kind of squeezing together and filing both sides, 
we want to file one side of the gap here so that we know that uh, we've got one good good even side. I'm just going to kind of rotate and push. And then you want to finish off with a file to deburr it. And I'll squeeze it together to make sure it's still got a nice even straight gap, which it does. All right, so I'm going to file one of the new rings here. I'm just going to go real gentle at first because I don't want to take too much off. That would be bad. So I've got a little bit more to go. Okay, we got about a thousandth inch to go. All right, we're at 15 thousandths. So that one's good. Now we'll move on to the middle ring. Looks like the middle ring is ready, just good to go just the way it is. Doesn't need any grinding. And then I'll check each of the oil control rings. And these look good as well. All right, well now, now we'll start putting the rings on. First I'll do the oil control rings. And there's little tiny bumps on this one, so I need to put this in first. And then after that I can put the uh, compression or the scraper rings in. So just stretch it and pop it on in. And make sure there's no overlap of the uh, ends of the uh, spring, springy looking uh, ring here. Next we can put in the scraper rings. So I'll do the bottom one first. And I'm going to clock it so the gap is faced in line with the wrist pin. So just slide it around, pull out, and Guard the end here with your finger so it doesn't scratch the piston, and then drop it in. And do the same with the next, and I'm staggering it to the other side of the piston. And there you go. Next one's a little harder. So these ones I'll stagger like this. This one's quite stiff, but it's the same process. You just want to um, get it into the gap there first, get it started. Once you got it started, flex out. And pull out and hold the end with your finger and then drop it in. And then do the same thing with the top ring. And like I said, when you're doing this, make sure the printed surface is facing up on both of these rings. There's a little, usually a little dot or a number. So this one I'm going to stagger to the other side of the piston. And I'll do the same thing. I'll get it started into the gap here and then work its way around, pull, and then drop it in. And you can see how loose these rings are. These are performance. This is going to be a racing engine, so they slide on real easy. There's not much pulling needed at all. And I've gapped these rings for cylinder number one, so I'm going to write cylinder number one on the side here. And we'll continue with the other three cylinders. I don't want to assume that each bore is exactly the same. All right, next is connecting rods and wrist pins. Looks like these are already pre-greased. I think I'll put a little assembly lube on them anyway. So here's one of the new sexy connecting rods. There's no front or rear for these. Either way works fine. Just put a little assembly lube in there. And then we just put it in like this. Stick the wrist pin through this hole. These wrist pin clips are a little bit tricky. They're actually kind of like a, a coil. And so the way to install them is to I kind of bend them apart just a little bit and then use a pick. There's a groove down here. Just get it started into the groove and then kind of force it in all the way around. And as you force it, it'll start compressing itself into the gap and you work your way around. And as you do that, it'll kind of go in. Once you get it about halfway in, it snaps right in. All right, I've got all the wrist pins and the rings on and the connecting rods. Now comes the fun part. We're going to put the crankshaft back into the block and then put these pistons into the cylinder. So I'll flip the block back over again. I decided to go ahead and get all new bearings. I think uh, probably most of the bearings were in good shape, but there were a couple that had some scoring on it. We'll just be replacing all of the bearings. So we've got a total of five journals. 
The bottom five bearings are all the same. For the top, the center one has a uh, guide surface here to center the crankshaft. I'm just going to put a little oil back here so they slide in real good. The ones with the holes and the ridge here go on the top half. Push them right in. Of course, making sure the bottom surface is totally clean. Make sure they're all flush here with the ends. And make sure these holes line up with the holes in the bearings or you won't get any oil to that journal. We'll put some assembly lube in here. We'll make sure all the journals are clean for the crankshaft. We'll put the crankshaft onto the bearings. I'll rotate it a little bit and make sure it feels good. Next we'll put the bottom bearings in place. Now it's time to put the bottom half of the crankcase back together with the top half of the crankcase. And we need to put a seal here or else the engine is going to leak. So the instructions say to use Loctite liquid sealant 51H which no longer exists. However, I've talked to a few people and they say Honda Bond works great. You don't want to use RTV or a copper gasket maker, that sort of thing. That'll add thickness here and uh, that'll change the clearance of the bearings. So you only need to put just a little bit of this stuff. Just put a very, very thin coat. I'm going to use a scraper just to make it as even as thin as possible. Now we'll flip it over and put it in place. Okay, so according to the instructions, we put the center uh, main cap bolts first, and the tightening torque for those is 44 foot pounds. As we put the bolts in, I'm putting a bit of oil on the threads and on the flange to ensure we get an accurate torque reading. And you want to make sure there's nothing in the, the bolt hole. If, it, if there's a fluid in there and you tighten down the bolt and it compresses it, you could get uh, cracking. So we want to make sure it's nice and clean. All right, we'll set our torque wrench to 44 foot-pounds. And as always, you want to tighten from the inside out. Okay, next we'll do the outer bolts. And the torque value for these outer bolts is 26 foot-pounds, which is not a lot. All right, so that's all for the bottom half. It will take some time for this Honda Bond stuff to set up. Probably a good idea not to run the motor for at least a couple hours. And a good thing that it'll take about that long to finish putting together and put back in the car anyway. That's all for part five. Come back for part six when I put the pistons back in and put the cylinder head on. Thanks for watching and bye bye.